Hello everybody, this video I want to talk about, well, the next uh, Quest headset and uh, if you've seen this uh, interview with Mark Zuckerberg on the Spotify, uh, he mentioned that the next uh, Quest headset coming in October. Now, based on the, well, non-official specs, uh, we're looking at higher resolution, and also a mini LED, which uh, will provide even deeper blacks, um, and also Custom punky lenses, which enables a Facebook to create uh, even uh, smaller, less bulkier headset, and it's also really customized uh, for the 2.6K uh, per eye uh, uh, display. So it's optimized for it to provide uh, users the best uh, viewing experience for that particular hardware set. Now I read that punky lenses are more prone to chromatic aberrations, uh, something that probably Facebook will try to uh, overcome uh, using software or kind of a hardware and software combination. But there are more advantages in terms of the perceived image quality uh, compared to the Frenzel, which is used right now. Now, the most important thing here is that right now we have, and again, we should have a 16 megapixel color camera for color pass-through. And as you know right now, the Meta Quest 2, Moco Quest 2, has uh, black and white and uh, low resolution uh, pass through and it's not impressive at all of course but this is supposed to change everything and bring and make the next quest a more of a mixed reality capable headset and again try to merge both VR and AR kind of in the same device and this is kind of a, probably a more natural progression compared to if you just think about something that look more like glasses for AR capabilities, that I'm sure it will take a few years until we get to the point where you can get all these technologies embedded into a very slim and light uh, glasses form factor. Also, Mark Zuckerberg mentioned that they're gonna be also very expensive at that point, and it will take several years until they get to the price of well, hundreds of dollars. Now, for me, this is the holy grail. I want to experience AR with, you know, with controllers that are optimized for, you know, for me using my hands. I don't need to hold a phone and see the AR experience through a mobile phone. For me, this is a holy grail, something that I can really, uh, you know, start using and can use it both for VR or mixed reality experiences. And, you know, just this being able, uh, being enabled for developers to explore and create really unique experiences with a color display, this will be absolutely amazing. There's also eye and face tracking, and uh, this of course uh, enables the headset to track uh, your facial expressions and also where you're actually looking at, where you're gazing at. Uh, this can be used both uh, in the UI for interaction, of course, uh, for other things, for example, when you're interacting with other people in the social uh, spaces in uh, virtual reality, uh, you can actually see the avatar with the eye and face ex expressions actually being expressed virtually rather than, well, well not, as in right now they are not. Now, of course, there are ways around that. You can use, for example, voice recognition to recognize whether, for example, if I speak something and I'm angry, it can represent it uh, virtually uh, animated on my face, predefined animation. But again, this just brings anything to a whole new level where you can actually, uh, whatever you do with your face, whatever you're looking at, what uh, facial expressions you're actually doing will be reflected in your avatar. As you know, Facebook is building uh, very strong on these uh, interactive uh, social places and they want people to be able to interact. It doesn't matter which app or which game you're using, uh, they want those features to be available for developers to take advantage of. So interaction between players will be more, you know, have a stronger presence, like the person is really there. You can hear the voice and you can see those interactions uh, as they taking uh, in real time and can be projected into a virtual character. Now, some of the features we already seen, uh, if you've seen the video of Project Cumbria preview, uh, you know, about the mixed reality, you can see more or less what we can expect from this uh, next Quest headset. Now, personally, uh, I really want something that can be used outdoors because when you're indoors, the use of mixed reality is so limited. I mean, I'm not saying that you can do a lot of great things, but it's very, very limited. So I'm still waiting for something that I can use outdoors and it was designed to use outdoors 
uh, Rana did something that you probably wouldn't use outdoors for different reasons. Uh, so, still, there's a, definitely a long way to go. Uh, I mean, the technologies are there, but until you see a product, consumer product, with a, uh, a cons well-priced consumer product that many can actually afford, that, again, many people can afford it, developers will be more motivated to care for the platform, it might take time. Having said that the product should be uh, uh, lighter and more compact, again, as I mentioned, uh, because of the different technologies used there. So we'll see how it will actually be used for things well outside of the comfort of your home and whether people use it for something that can be beneficial for outdoor use. We need to wait and see. Now, of course, in this type of experiences, we should be able to have a mixed experience so it can be mixed reality where you see the real world and uh, virtual objects appear uh, in the world and you can actually switch during a single same experience to virtual reality uh, or developers can just decide to go from each path i mean until now of course we we've seen that in ar and vr they took different paths i mean there's a ar application or a vr application but eventually with this type of headset we should be able to experience something that either mix or if developers try to go with just a single uh, you know, application like the AR, VR, they can do that as well. Now, definitely Facebook is doing things right because again, uh, they were able to sell uh, a lot of these uh, headset, VR headset. Uh, but the thing that I'm really looking forward to see is uh, the interface, how users uh, going to interact with the world in mixed reality and basically not just with the Quest controller uh, because uh, again I think the solution would be eventually with something hybrid that involves AI because again like for example when you play a game you can choose mouse or keyboard you can choose to play with a, a gamepad uh, and of course depends some uh, people have disabilities and uh, Basically, it needs to be a combination of different things that adapts actually and personalized to the user. And like when you have in games, when you have, for example, uh, games that you can do key binding, you can decide how you want to customize things based, you know, how you prefer to do it. And uh, it can be something, uh, for example, with a uh, tangible interface like trackpad and buttons or an external controller. Uh, it can be something that... Um, use an external accessory gadget, like an ex external device, for example. It can be something, for example, that the camera uses. For example, I personally prefer something that can track the one that my use of my thumb against my index finger. So I can use it kind of like a mouse, you know, maybe in certain application. And of course, in certain application, you might need different type of uh, user interfaces in order to make it uh, fit to certain applications, like drawing, for example, etc. And if you want to type something, you probably want to use, for example, like voice, right? Or if you don't want, for example, to have some kind of interference when other people are hearing you, you can have something that can actually read uh, how your lips are actually moving and translate that to a text. Uh, again, there are many ways uh, to see how future mixed reality devices will actually implement uh, user interfaces and i really want to see if actually facebook done something about it with this headset rather than just going with you know the regular hand tracking which i hope is improved and also the default controllers all right moving on we can see that it uses the qualcomm xr2 plus gen 1 sock now based on what i've read uh, we are talking about 30% more performance, but again, that's what I read, so I might get it wrong. I mean, those sources might get it wrong, but again, extra performance is always great uh, because again, one of the things that I kind of uh, find a bit uh, underwhelming is just seeing the visuals in many of the Meta Quest 2 experiences, uh, and some of them actually force developers to create low poly, uh, use low poly uh, 3D models, uh, because, again, they need to kind of uh, make sure that the application write in good frame rates and it leads to some many, many games just either look realistic but bad or just use low poly. Not that I have something against low poly, but I mean, I just you see that it's a limitation 
and uh, yeah I just want to see more performance so developers can deliver uh, better experiences of course uh, you should be able to uh, run PC uh, VR applications as well where we of course don't have this limitation uh, yeah in general it should be more or less the same probably in the quest 2 I don't think that this extra buff in computing power uh, will be something that will be very meaningful in terms of the visuals compared to the quest 2 I mean not a big jump that's what I'm trying to say so but we need to wait now personally I'm looking more towards the mixed reality capabilities I'm telling you I mean if you follow my channel you know that until now I was uh, doing a lot of augmented reality with my phone with my uh, uh, mainly with my phone and with my tablet basically but I'm holding the device all the time so I'm craving for for headset that I can wear and I can get my hands free and interact with the world and of course developers are not limited by the way to create just things for uh, small indoor spaces so I really want to see after we see everything and we know more about the headset uh, what developers will create even for outdoor use I mean I don't mind going outside with the headset and and, and have fun with it, the amazing and cool type of experiences using APIs AI APIs with object recognition I mean this can be amazing but I want to see um, again the limitations for it so if there's something like you know uh, the range that uh, the three scanning depth scanning is limited to uh, whether it's be good and functional for outdoor use and what developers basically are going to create with it I'm just super hyped for it uh, now the other thing let me to talk about uh, well the battery by the way we need to wait and see because again AR was eating batteries like crazy so I really want to see I mean how it's actually optimized uh, the other thing is regarding price and uh, for what I've read, we are talking about $800, something like that. Anyway, higher price compared to the Quest 2, much higher price. Uh, so we need to see whether, I mean, again, this is supposed to be the next generation of the MetaQuest, right? I mean, it's not like there's, they're releasing a second device that, you know, it's another product for more professional use. Uh, this device is supposed to be uh, the next gen, you know, the next MetaQuest headset. Uh, so, putting a high price on it is something I was kind of surprised because, again, uh, the goal is to try to reach as many users as possible as well. And uh, I think even then, I think Facebook just sold it, the, the headset, the Quest 2 headset, for a very low price, uh, probably production price. So, putting high price tag on it, well, I mean, again, it's just to be the same as before where VR they couldn't really move fast forward. Because the price was pretty high, the entry price. Uh, when it was again, you need a PC, a VR ready PC, and the headset, and it's all kind of a turn to be very expensive. And it kind of halt the progression, you know, moving uh, the VR industry forward. And then Quest 2 came in with a great price, the technology. Yeah, you can use it with the PC or, or without the PC untethered, uh, or you can use it with PC untethered. And it just made it much more, much more accessible and popular to many users. Now, the other thing I'm very excited is seeing what Apple will bring. I mean, will it be a multi-purpose headset, mixed reality and VR? And how it will compare to other things on the market? Uh, and its design, of course, and the price. I mean, uh, because again, it seems like, I mean, things are moving forward, but until Apple enters the market, things are not really accelerating. <laughs> I mean, they're moving in a very safe pace. Uh, with future kind of a, uh, sorry a very kind of a gradual improvement until Apple is coming to the market and then all the market just go crazy and everybody start copying Apple so again this is something that I'm very excited uh, to wait for as well and uh, yeah until then I think the only thing we have right now that's uh, looks like a really great mixed reality headset that uh, should appeal to a large audience large customer base consumer a large consumer base uh, will be this new next generation MetaQuest headset. So yeah, soon. And as you know, I'm super excited about mixed reality uh, hardware and applications. I want to try it myself. So this is going to be a really great moment to jump back. Uh, and this is about it. Um, yeah, I want to ask you a question. Uh, what's your opinion about the upcoming uh, headset? Uh, do you have high hopes for it? Do you really care about the mixed reality features in it? Or are you just into VR? Let me know in the comment section below what you think and uh, more videos are coming. So make sure to subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.
Tschüss.